So this is the second video in the lessons on uh, monopolistic competition and in this one we'll be looking at how to draw graphs to show the costs, revenues and profits in monopolistic competition. We start with the short run equilibrium um, and you can see that the graph here looks exactly the same as it does for a monopoly, com uh, a, a business which is in a monopoly. So we have a downward sloping average revenue curve um, marginal cost and average cost curves as, as you would normally expect to see and that means that the firm is making super normal profit the difference between P1 and C1 for each of the items that they sell okay now that as I said is the graph for the short run and that rather implies that something changes in the long run so here I'm going to ask you to think about what adds to the pricing power that an individual firm has in monopolistic competition and what actually might reduce their pricing power. So think about those um, example industries, the hairdressers, the coffee shops and so on, and think about what helps them to set a higher price and what make or what limits their ability to set a higher price. Stop the video for a moment. Uh, think about those ideas, jot some ideas down and restart when you're ready. So here's the first one that we have for you. There will be many competitors. We said that there are lots of, of um, producers with similar products and services. So the price elasticity of demand is quite elastic and therefore the price will be more competitive. They have to take that into account. However, point two, because they have some product differentiation, that means that they can charge a different price. And that price can reflect the particular qualities of their product or service. That doesn't necessarily mean they charge a higher price. It may be that their unique qualities are that they appeal to a market which has a lower disposable income and, and they want to charge a lower price to reflect that. Um, and thirdly, we've got low barriers to entry and exit. So they have to price competitively because it's easy for new firms to come in and compete with them. So what does this mean for monopolistic competition in the long run? Let's follow through a chain of analysis of what might happen to change the situation. We know that barriers to entry are low and we know that supernormal profits are available. That's what we showed in that first graph. So those supernormal profits will attract other firms into the industry to enter. And it's easy for them to do so because of the low barriers to, en to entry. And that means that supply in the industry as a whole increases. But demand for the industry doesn't necessarily increase, at least not in line with the increase in supply. Therefore, each of the incumbent firms, the firms that are already existing in the market, loses some of their customers to some of these new entrants. And they have a lower level of demand than they had before. So bearing in mind, that process that we've just worked through, how is this graph going to change? What the um, graph on the screen shows, again, is the short run supernormal profit making equilibrium in a monopolistically competitive market. What I'd like you to do is to see if you can sketch that graph as it stands now and then change the average revenue and marginal revenue curves to show what happens to them and to the profits available to the firm on this graph when others enter the industry in the long run. So stop the video, sketch down this original graph and then add to it some new curves to show the changes and restart when you're ready. What we've done on the graph here is faded out the original average revenue and marginal revenue curves so that we can then add in new ones to highlight to you what should be happening here. So first of all, here are the new average and marginal revenue curves. As you can see, they've shifted inwards towards the origin and that's because as each firm loses some of its market share, it's having to reduce the price that it charges for each um, of the goods that it's selling. So they've got fewer quantity that they can sell. And that means with the new marginal revenue curve that the profit maximizing position has changed. So where MR2 is equal to MC has changed. And that means that there's a lower quantity 
being sold by each firm in the market. Not only that, but if you look at um, where that vertical line touches the average revenue curve, it's also touching the average cost curve. It's now just tangential to the average cost curve and just touches it, but with there's no overlap where average revenue is greater than average cost. So at P2, C2, both at the same point, they're no longer making super normal profit, they're making just normal profit instead. So what we've done on this slide is simplify that graph a little by taking out the original average and marginal revenue curves and just retaining the AR2 and MR2 curves so that you can see what's happening a little better here. And we can see that the profit maximizing position has shrunk it, um, as there are fewer customers for each of the firms because more firms have entered the market. And we can also see that yellow triangle in the center and that shows the deadweight loss to society. And the reason for that is that the firm is not producing at the minimum point on the average cost curve. Now, here's a question for you. Is this firm in monopolistic competition being efficient in the long run? You may want to stop the video for a moment and have a think about the different forms of um, efficiency and whether you think that they're fulfilling them. Restart when you're ready. Well, we can see that they're not productively efficient because they're not producing at the lowest point on the average cost curve where AC equals MC. They're also not allocatively efficient because they're not producing where marginal cost is equal to average revenue. We can also see they haven't got super normal profits. So the likelihood, according to this theory, is that they're not dynamically efficient. They don't have the super normal profit to be so. Now that can be quite complicated to draw. So here are some suggestions for the best way to draw the long run position of monopolistic competition. So the suggestion is that you try doing it in this order. Obviously you start with the uh, axes for your graph and then draw the average cost curve, then the average revenue curve and make sure that it's price elastic and that it is just touching the average cost curve, but don't try and make it um, that tangential point at the lowest point on average cost. You can't do that, but it will be just touching the average cost curve to the left of the lowest point on the average cost. Third, now draw the marginal revenue curve. So that, of course, will also be price elastic. And you know, you always draw the average revenue, uh, sorry, the marginal revenue curve about half the distance between the price axis and the average revenue line. When you've got those in place, don't do marginal cost yet, but next draw a line down from that point of tangency where AR and AC just touch. Draw a line down vertically from there to the bottom axis to find the quantity of goods being produced. And then go back to the point of tangency and draw across to the vertical axis to find the price and cost which are being charged. And finally, then you can draw the marginal cost, which must be on the marginal, uh, must equal marginal revenue on that line from quantity to the point of tangency between the average revenue and average cost curve. If you look back at the graph, you'll be able to see that that's the case because it's also that marginal cost must also pass through the minimum point of average cost. So that's the tricky bit to add into your graph. That's why you should put that piece in last. And the best piece of advice here is that practice makes perfect. So I would suggest that you try copying through the list of um, the order in which to do this a few times in order to make sure that you practice getting it right. So having said that, we could now say that we, we, we could now evaluate an, uh, something about this theory that we've just gone through by saying that actually that stable long run equilibrium, which you've just practiced drawing, is unlikely to happen in practice. Let's think about why. First of all, in the long run, the representative firm in the, in the market is making normal profits. That's what we showed on that graph, that they will only have normal profits available. In reality, though, firms are constantly looking for ways to keep their average revenue greater than their average cost in order to try and maintain some super normal profits. Um, 
so the market is constantly changing because of that. New products come and go. Some new products are good. Some new products are less good. And so they disappear more quickly. Some products change. Um, and businesses are constantly trying to maintain some um, slightly more inelastic price inelastic demand. So existing products within the market go through a product life cycle. That means that at some stages they will sell more um, and that their sales will be growing and then new products will come onto the market and that will affect their sales and their, their sales will grow more slowly or even shrink. But the length of that product life cycle varies from market to market, it depends on the business, the type of business that you're talking about. Um, but also, of course, what you often see is that businesses, for example, coffee shops might spend very heavily on marketing their product. They might try and use innovation to extend the life of their brands or to extend particularly the profit that's available in, to their brand. So finally, for this video, here's a summary of the features of perfect competition and monopolistic competition. And your task is to see if you can fill in the grid. So either on your worksheet or on a separate piece of paper, copy this down and then see if you can fill in the gaps on that worksheet. And when you've uh, finished doing that, you can restart and go on to the next slide. OK, let's just run through the grid here. So first of all, the number of producers or sellers in the market. In both cases, there are many, plenty of them available. The type of goods and services are not the same, though. Homogenous in perfect competition, but differentiated in mon monopolistic. So that means, does the firm have control over their own prices? No, not at all in perfect competition and some control in, in monopolistic. Linked to that, is branding or marketing important? No, in the case of perfect competition, because it makes no difference to the prices they can charge, whereas in monopolistic, yes, because it does make a difference. Entry barriers, very similar between the two markets. Does it lead to allocative efficiency in the long run? Yes, for perfect competition, but no for monopolistic. And the productive efficiency in the long run? Same again, yes for perfect competition and no for monopolistic. So that's the end of this second lesson, uh, second video in the lesson about uh, monopolistic competition. In the next final video, we'll be looking at some case studies of monopolistic competition to see how you can evaluate and an analyse and evaluate this market structure.